Are you dating? Are you pregnant? Is your ex still stalking you? Are you selling your house? Are you quitting YouTube? Are you married? Yes, yes, yes. Let's get into it. I'm actually dating someone that I cherish and respect. I'm spilling the tea already. <laughs> Hi family, welcome back to the channel. Thank you so much for coming back. Today's video is going to be all about the long awaited Q&A. This Q&A is going to be very TMI, but it's also going to be very informative. I'm gonna be answering a lot of the questions that you all have for me and I'm not gonna be leaving anything off limit, okay? I have my phone right here. I'm gonna go off of the YouTube questions because, whoa, because this is a YouTube Q&A. So I will be going off of that and before before I even get into the Q&A, I want to say Happy New Year's to every single one of you. Happy New Year, Happy New Year, Happy New Year. I think the last time I posted was New Year's Eve. I did a live video when I was going to church that night. It was really fun. We had an amazing time and I said I was going to come back with a whole bunch of videos and I just haven't been able to do that because I'm going to tell you, I'm going to get into all of that. but. If you're new here, hi, my name is Mercy. I'm a registered nurse, BSN RN. And on this channel, I talk about nursing, lifestyle, beauty. I do a little bit of vlogging. I talk about feminine hygiene. I talk about natural hair. So. If any of that sounds good at all and you would like to join the family, please go ahead and hit the subscribe button down below. And also, make sure to hit the bell notification so you never miss another video. For those of you who are OG, I want to say Happy New Year again and welcome back. All right, family, so let's get right into the video. I have all of the questions. Like I said, I'm going to be going to my YouTube page here. I'm going to get all of the questions from YouTube and we are going to be going through them, okay? I have it right here. I have all of the questions right here. So I'm just going I have 70 questions and the questions are still up so you guys can go and look at them they're still up so I will start with the top questions first um, because that means that a lot of you had the same questions and um, yeah we'll just go from there it's been a long time since I've done a Q&A and I have a lot of new people here and my channel has taken a different I feel like it's taken a life of its own here recently, so I have posted a little bit of everything here and there. My branding has changed a little bit, and the looks of things have changed a little bit. By the way, this is my master bedroom. I know you guys have not seen the full thing. Don't worry, I filmed a whole video of me setting up the master bedroom, and I'm gonna post that here soon. But first thing first, let me address the reason I haven't been posting here recently, especially on YouTube. So you all know that I did Vlogmas, which means I was posting a video every single day December and then towards the end I think that by the 24th I didn't post anymore and then ever since then this is like I said my first video coming back and the reason for that is I had a lot going on during vlogmas if you followed me you saw that I was still you know decorating my house for Christmas buying the Christmas presents the Christmas decor I was also setting up my Airbnb which I decorated all by myself i had a whole bunch of guests at the airbnb as well so i was getting that up and running so i was pretty busy so by the time vlogmas was over i was exhausted and i was ready to take some time off i think this is the furthest i've ever went and not only that i had a whole lot going on as well so it was a lot so after vlogmas i decided to take a few days off and then i felt sick i wasn't feeling well um i had to go to the er i i did i just didn't know what was wrong i just knew that i was tired i was tired a lot I was exhausted and I said, okay, maybe I'm working myself too much. I try to delegate everything to everybody else. The cleaners for the Airbnb, I just try to put a lot of the workload off of myself and relax. But I did that for about three days, which is not like me. <laughs> I'm always moving. I hate being bored. I hate just sitting around. Um, but I took a few days off and it didn't make me feel better. So I ended up going to see the doctors. Um, there was this evening when I was feeling really, really sick and I didn't know what was wrong. I was like, what is going on? Am I pregnant? Like, <laughs> what is going on with me? So I ended up going to the ER and which was a bad idea because if you know anything about nursing and the medical field, they triage people when you go to the, the ER. So triage just means they'll do priority first. So if I went in with a headache, but someone else went in with a gunshot wound, they're gonna take care of that person first. But let's say um, I went in with shortness of breath and someone else went in with like a severe headache, they're probably gonna take care of the shortness of breath first because you go by ABC, airway, breathing, circulation. I spent four hours at the hospital. I was just sitting there 
waiting and waiting and waiting and i'm telling you everybody else was walking in and getting taken care of and i was just sitting there so i was starting to get annoyed but i understand the game so i felt grateful um i would call my friends and family and they're like are you still there they should take care of you they should do this i'm like this is actually a good thing believe it or not that just means that there's not like there's nothing wrong with me basically so anyway i ended up going to the er i got checked out everything is fine i was just exhausted and i needed a break so i decided to take a break from everything you know take a break from work i'll start posting my reels here and there on my other social media but those are like six second videos that i already had and i was just you know put a caption to it and post it but as far as filming decorating you know actual computer work i was not doing any of that i was just taking my time off so i apologize that the q a took forever to come out but here we are so without further ado let's get into these questions okay question number one this person says happy new year Okay, so this person wants to know what my favorite color is. Somebody's at my door. Let's see. One second, my doorbell. All right, that was my doorbell. I had a delivery. Anyway, let's get back to these questions. Okay, so this person wants to know what my favorite color is. Color-wise, my favorite color is pink. Nadia and I have the same favorite color. As you can see, my phone case is pink. I'm a pink girl. I love pink. I'm a girly girl, and I realized that my daughter loves, 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 loves pink as well. Look at my pink um this is not a stanley cup i don't know if you guys know about the stanley cup craze that's going around this is definitely not a stanley cup but it's cute as a button okay but anyway yes my favorite color is pink however i like to wear black i actually like monochromatic colors if that makes sense like the neutrals um it makes me feel rich it makes me feel more high end i don't like the bright colors like the colors that don't occur naturally um, I don't like them. So like the neons, I'll wear it once in a while here and there due to trends and whatnot. But I usually stay to more towards the neutral side. So that's where I'm at peace. Okay, so this person wants to know how I stay encouraged in the midst of adversity, especially when you're trying so hard to move on and you feel pushed back. Sis, this question though, <sighs> I'll be honest with you, I have no magic formula. Every time I have challenges in my life, I feel like that's the devil's way of trying to bring me down from doing something that God has appointed me to do. Because any ability or talent or ideas that I have, I truly believe that it comes from God. And I feel like God is the one who has blessed me with those talents. And because he's blessed me with it, I know he wants me to use it. So whether it's having a voice, having a platform, being creative, I know that God put those things in me. So whenever the devil tries to deter me from that, I see it as a challenge and I like to fight through it. Now, do I have days where I want to give up? Absolutely. Do I have days where I feel weak? Do I have days where the imposter syndrome comes in? Do I have days where I feel like I'm not enough? I have all of those days, but one thing about me is if I'm going through something today, I will lay in my bed and take the day off and do what I need to do, but tomorrow I'm getting up. If God blesses me with tomorrow, I'm getting up and I'm fighting and I'm overcoming that. That's the kind of mentality I have. That is how I keep pushing. I just see everything, every adversity in my life as a challenge to see if I'm going to break and because of that I do everything in my possible best and I try not to break unless it's God's will of course but I know that I can do anything with God on my side there are 70 questions y'all but some of them are repeated so I'm not gonna go through all of them okay so this next person says do you exercise how much do you weigh and how do you stay in shape so I do exercise but not as much as I should I don't have a routine and that's something I want to work on this year. I want to have a um, healthy routine. I used to have a routine before, but there's been a lot going on and I just, I put my health at the back burner again. That goes back to why I wanted to go to the hospital because I started to freak myself out in my head thinking that, oh my God, I haven't been really healthy. Maybe something is wrong with me. But the truth is I was just exhausted and I was feeling really tired, like just exhausted and drained, almost like a low earned level that is why I ended up going to the hospital but that is also why I want to come up with a stricter routine um, workout routine eating habits and things of that nature but yes I do work out not as much as I should my second way to stay in shape is to be a mother to Nadia Nadia keeps me on my 
feet. Like, we have this big house, and when I say she's busy, she goes missing, and I have to go looking for her. And she's always into something. She's always getting into something. And as you can see, I have a lot of blank furniture, and she likes, she's an artist, okay? So she likes to draw, she likes to spill things she likes to do this do that she keeps me on my feet but that is part of being a child that is part of growing up and i'm so grateful that i have the ability and the um the ability really to stay home and mother her and also just be with her as much as i can because i do work from home but yes i'm coming up i want i want to do a lot of challenge with you guys this year um challenges i should say i want to do the hair challenges and i want to do some you know weight challenges some cleaning house things i want to do a lot with you this year so yeah that's a great question life with miss carla Miss Carla wants to know um, what are my thoughts on falling in love again and um, a failed relationship. What strategies do I have? All right, so my thoughts on falling in love again is, to be honest with you guys, I I am dating. Like I I have someone in my life. A lot of you keep asking me this question. It's been close to two years since my last situationship. That was a complete mess. It was a mess from the start and. I try to save face. I try to like keep it out of the public eye. It, it ended up blowing up. And at this point, it's been two years since I've moved on from that situation. I have fully moved on with my life. I'm actually dating someone that I cherish and respect who respects me as well. Um, like I said, it's been over two years. I'm a young woman, a young successful woman. I have a lot going on for myself. I'm not a widow. I'm not a divorcee. I'm not um, bound to anyone. So there is no reason why I should take 50 years to try to get over something I got over the minute I got, like I was getting over it while I was in it because I knew that wasn't it. It just happened to blow up um, publicly which if it was my choice it wouldn't have been like that that was my private relationship it should have stayed private but since it didn't oh well I moved on with my life I told you guys you know a lot of you have seen a lot of things that has happened here on the internet um, with you know I guess the person still trying to hang on my coattail by putting my name in every single post and videos is pathetic at this point um the stalking has not stopped the suing has not stopped i've won every case every time but it doesn't um it doesn't what's it called it doesn't stop them from trying to like gain this clout i think the clout you know they enjoyed the clout when they had it when everything was happening when they put everything out there and the, believe it or not the negative attention was actually enjoyable to them i yeah i have moved on from that like i said i'm dating someone that i respect who respects me i'm having a lot of fun and i'm getting to know myself again i'm getting to learn myself my life is not perfect i'm still learning i'm still growing so i don't have any strategies did i learn a lot of lessons from that situation Oh my goodness, a lot of lesson was learned. But am I bitter? No, I'm not bitter. Do I think all men are dogs? No. There are just certain people, they're just like, they're mental issues. And it's not my, uh, it's not my responsibility to fix that. Overall, I'm grateful. My gratitude is like, I'm grateful. I'm in a really good, safe space, and that's all that matters. As far as anything else that comes with the stalking and the clout chasing and um, the suing and just all the pathetic attempt to get attention, I don't pay attention to that. All right, so this goes back to the question I just answered. So this person wants to know, are you dating someone? And if so, do they have a problem with how you're portrayed publicly? Honestly, like I said, yes, I am dating someone that I cherish respect secondly the minute i started to date i told myself that this is something to tell like this is not something you can surprise someone if you have a uh obsessive ex a stalker who refuses to let go when you start to see someone else that is the first thing you have to tell them don't surprise that person don't put don't let that person find out on their own and think you're a liar or, or think something is wrong with you and honestly Every time a new video comes out and someone sends it to me, we just watch it and laugh. Like, everybody knows what's going on. It's 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 a cry for help. It's a cry for attention. It's, it's a lot going on that you guys don't know. Till this day, I haven't really sat and explained 
what I really went through and continue to go through. I'll talk about it when I'm ready. I'll talk like I don't need to do a smear campaign. I don't need to post about anybody online. Like I don't need to do any of that. I just, God blesses me for who I am, who my heart is and everything I lost, everything, every hurt that I went through, everything I felt, I feel like has been rewarded in so many ways. Because like I said, I have my power my power, I have my power back. I have my identity back. I have myself back. And the people who know me, know me. And the people who love me, love me. And trust me, they do. All right, so next question here. Do you still practice nursing? Is it possible to benefit from two careers at the same time? Thank you so much. Yes, it's possible to practice two careers. So let's say you are, I don't know, you have a marketing degree and you have a nursing degree. If you have time, you can do both. Now, I'm not a, I don't even know what the word is to use, um, but I'm not a, a career police person, so I can't tell you, like, don't take my word for word. But yeah, you can, I know that as a nurse, I can practice as a nurse and, and still do what I'm doing. A lot of nurses are entrepreneurs as well. I just chose not to practice as a nurse at that time because my hands were full and I haven't returned. Um, does it mean that I'm not gonna return someday? I might go back to nursing someday and sooner than you think. But right now, again, I have my hands tied. If you don't know this, I run basically three businesses. I have my hair care line, which is Nimbat Lux, the natural aloe vera hair growth oil. We're still doing very well with that. Um, we have grown and expanded to the point where we don't like we don't sell out as much as we used to because we have bigger quantity now so we're always like we're on it we're restocking as much as we can and i also have my real estate business which i fix and flip homes i buy homes renovate them rent them out or recently here i got into the airbnb game so i bought a home started from scratch i renovated the entire house um, and then went back in and decorated the entire house and then put it on Airbnb. For those of you who don't know what Airbnb is, Airbnb is kind of like a hotel, but in your home. So it can be in any neighborhood um, and you just rent the whole house out to a family or a couple or a single person, a travel nurse, things of that nature. And the third thing that I do is my social media. Believe it or not, I sa I've said this a thousand times, this as well as a business because it allows me to not only create content content and do the things that I love but it also allows me to work with brands so I become like a walking advertisement for brands will you get back with Nadia's dad <laughs> skip <laughs> okay so going back to that question I said I was dating someone before never said who it was and I don't feel like saying who it is it could be anybody at this point I'm doing things a little differently now now do I have it all figured out as far as dating go I don't but I just know that I'm in a great place right now and I'm having fun and I'm satisfied I'm satisfied where I am but as far as who the person is okay <laughs> okay sorry I was reading the text message all right let's get back to these questions all right hello do you have a television show I swear I saw you on TLC <laughs> I don't know I um I don't have a television show fingers crossed maybe someday I'm hoping to do like a, a HGTV fix and flip type thing someday or even be on an episode but we'll see but as of now no I, I do not are you and Nandy back together? Oh Lord. Mercy, what are your current hair goals? What is your length? Okay, that's a great question. My current hair goal is to start all over this year. I'm gonna start all over, you know, with the hair challenges with you guys this year. I know I keep saying that, but this year, it's a new month, it's a new year, and I promise you all, I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna do it this year. I remember back in the day when we used to do all of the hair challenges and all of the fun stuff with the hair um, growth videos. I stopped doing that and it's been a little inconsistent but I'm gonna get back to that so I will be doing I already bought the vitamins I'm gonna be doing a vitamin video I'm gonna be showing you guys I'm gonna be showing you guys all of the vitamins that I take to grow my hair I'm gonna be take, showing you guys all the vitamins you need if your mood is down vitamins you need for your gut health all of those things okay I gotta tap back into my nursing career I mean I have it I might as well use it right but yeah we're gonna get back to 
especially to answer this question the hair goal videos and yeah we're gonna do all of that so that is my goal um as far as length i don't have a dream length i, I want it to be healthy enough where i don't feel like i have to wear wigs where I can just wear my hair all day long, all year long, and feel comfortable and only wear wigs and weaves if I want to, not because I have to. And that's where I want all of my, my audience and people who follow me, that's where I want them to get as well. I want us to all get to a place where we're comfortable in our hair and not have to feel like we have to wear wigs and weaves and stuff like that okay this person said mercy it's been a million years since you've done hair growth videos i know i just talked about that we're going back to those we're definitely going back to the hair growth videos okay so this person wants to know she has an 18 month old she wants to know if the aloe vera oil works for kids as well yes i started putting the aloe vera oil on nadia's hair when she was about five six months old this is all natural ingredients there are no chemicals in my oil there are no um preservatives there are no additives no nothing they're all 100 natural oils natural organic and carrier oils okay so nothing chemical but if you just want to be on the safe safe side i would say about five months and up this oil is good for men it's good for women it's good for children um, as I said, and it's also good for all hair type. Even if your hair is perm, you can use it. It's not gonna damage your hair if it's, if it's perm. It's just gonna make it healthier and help it grow. But yes, you can you can use it at 18 months old. Yes, you can use the oil. All right, so this person wants to know about investments, especially if you are upon hard times. So for me, when I was starting out, I, I'm a very frugal person. And I say this all the time. A lot of people don't believe it for some reason. I'm a very frugal person because I know what it's like to not have it all. But I've also grown to know what it's like to have enough. Now, I don't have it all. I do not have it all, but I have enough to where I'm comfortable and I'm continuing to pray and grow as I, you know, as I mature. So when I started out, when I didn't have, you know, assets, I saved my money. I was very smart with my money. I'm not the kind of girl who wants to impress people online by buying the most expensive outfits, the most expensive um you know things just to take a picture and post online i've never been that person even till this day i have a few designer bags and i have a few designer items and i wear them repeatedly repeatedly you will never catch a lot of influencer wearing the same bags or wearing the same outfits in public or on their instagram but at the end of the day me being a financially sound person I can tell, I can tell that this person, yes, they might be making good money, but I can tell that they're not very good with money because if you're flexing for the gram, if your whole life is to impress people, there is something wrong with that. That means every money that comes in goes out. Every single penny that comes in goes out. So to answer that question, before I get on my rant about that topic, I would say be very smart with your money and be intentional with your money, okay? So even if you're starting out as an influencer, start where you are. Don't go buy all of these fancy equipment because you want to have the best video quality and the best background. What if it doesn't work out? Now you're stuck with all of that stuff that you just spend all of this money on and it's not making you money back. So save up your money, know where every penny is going. Take time to study your finance. Take time to study your income. What I see people doing is a lot of people will come to me and say, Mercy, I want to be an investor. And I'll ask them, what is your credit score? They don't know what their credit score is. What is your income? They barely know what their income is. They barely know how much they're making, like how much is coming in and how much is going out. You have to have goals. Like you have to be financially educated. And I'm not saying go to business school or go to finance school. Responsibility is at the top of everything. You have to sit down, sit with yourself, make goals for yourself and be responsible enough to carry out those goals. You can't just jump and do things. So. That's one thing I would say. Are you and Andy back together? Like like I said, a lot of these questions are repeated. Let me drink some water. It's, it's getting hot in here. Let's see here. Hey Mercy, I would like to know your journey to real estate. My journey to real estate, maybe I can do a separate video on that, but my journey to real estate, I have always been obsessed with properties. If you've watched me for a while, I've been obsessed with 
home decor. Um, I used to watch um, HGTV all the time, way, way, way before I even became a nurse. I've always been so intrigued by, you know, buying properties and flipping them. But at this time, I didn't have a penny to my name. So I never ever thought I could do it, but I always dreamed of doing it. And my dream was I wanted to be on that TV show. Like if I went to buy my home, I wanted to be featured on that show. And I became obsessed with it and obsessed with learning about real estate. And then it went into learning about investing in real estate and I saved up my money bought my first house with the intention of living in that house for about two years and then moving out and turning it into a rental property but it ended up happening quickly I lived in the house for about a year a little over a year and I ended up moving out of state and once I moved out of state I refused to sell my property even though I was told to sell it but something told me that I would need that property so I even put the house a lot of you don't know this but I ended up I put the house on the market I had a buyer it was a family they really really loved the neighborhood and wanted to move there when I got the offer um, I didn't accept the offer I told my realtor that I would get back to her but I went to sleep that night and I had this dream and everything was falling apart every single thing was falling apart I woke up that morning and I saw the situation I was in and again a lot of you only found out when ish hit the fan but things have been building up before that I told myself oh my goodness if you sold your house and you had to move back home where would you go now i have family i can live with but at this point i was a grown woman i had my kid i had been engaged before i didn't feel like coming back and moving in with my family so i told myself i don't want to sell my house the money sounded good i had just owning the house for one year i had a huge amount of equity i would have walked away with cash like good cash but i told myself i didn't want to sell my house i wanted to instead put my house in rent and i told myself okay you've been learning all of this about rental properties investments this and that this is a great opportunity and at that time i had already bought a house in georgia i was living in the house that i bought again a lot of you already know the story but i was already living in the house that i bought so i was like i'm gonna rent my house this is gonna be my first property uh, my first investment property and i already lived in the house for a full year um i bought it as a fha after a year with an fha loan you can move out and turn it into a rental property and that's exactly what i ended up doing um i didn't do it the way that I had envisioned doing it the way that I planned to do it but I ended up it, it still ended up happening so that's how that first house turned into an investment property and the way that I got into the rest of them I'll tell you guys all about that here um, maybe in the future but yes that's literally I stumbled into that when I wasn't even ready but that's how I got into it oh this person says I have nothing to ask just praying for you thank you so much sweetheart are you back with Nadia's dad it's the same questions repeated so many times. I would love to know how you navigate it all, being a mom, being a YouTuber, a house flipper. Sis, that's a great question. I just, as I said before, I like to keep myself busy. I have been like this since I was a child. I just have this higher purpose that I'm trying to get to and I'm always, always busy trying to get to it. Sometimes I need to take a break, but that's just in me. That's just who I am. So how I manage to um, do all of this is number one I work from home and I had to work my butt off to get to that point where I can work from home and you know take care of my daughter my daughter's still young she's in school now she's in preschool but a lot of you know that I had this thing I had this fear of taking her to daycare and having someone else watch over her just because I have been through so much trauma and I was so overly protective of her because I didn't trust anybody but thankfully moving back home and being in um, a safer space i was able to get over that fear so now she's in daycare i'm sorry now she's in preschool but preschool is three times a week and it's only for two hours a day so outside of that she's at home but nadia reads very well she's very articulate she's very very smart very very smart and she's respectful i spent a lot of time with her and i pour a lot into her to you know just do the best i can so she can turn out to be a decent human i already like to keep going i like to stay busy so it comes natural the fact that i can you know do all of those things and still survive are you and your baby daddy back together <laughs> you 
guys what are your current hair goals okay i already answered that one okay this is about christmas now this q a is kind of old i think i posted it during christmas time so that was a christmas question i spent christmas with my family i hosted christmas at my house we had an amazing time everybody came over we cooked and we ate and we took a lot of pictures did a lot of videos and we had an amazing time so yes tell us how to make money <laughs> I just touched on that to make money you have to be disciplined and you have to be responsible but honestly there is so much money out here to be made don't have the mindset the scarcity mindset that a lot of especially us black people have do not have that at all have an abundance mindset because there is a lot a lot of money to be made you just have to surround yourself with the right people um, have the right uh, responsible adults in your life and um, become a responsible adult and follow the people that inspire you and learn from them. That's what I do and that's what I would suggest that you guys do as well. That's one of the things that has really, really helped me. Okay, so this person says, how is the family dynamic with you and Nadia's father? It's great. We co-parent very well. We do an amazing job, the two of us, with our daughter. Can you talk about your inner strength and inner beauty? Oh, thank you so much. That's a that's an amazing question again. And I kind of touched on this already, but my inner strength comes from having a higher purpose and believing a higher power. And I believe that whatever talents or creativity or ideas that I have comes from God and he gave it to me because he wants me to use them. And because of that, I feel like I can't let myself down. I can't let him down. I can't let my family down. So I just try, I do my best to keep pushing. Even with adversity, I do my best to keep pushing. So this person wants more day-to-day -day video, like day in the life. I'm gonna get on that, I promise, I'm gonna get on that. I miss those videos myself. I love doing those videos. I love just sharing with you guys what I'm doing on a daily basis or what I'm doing today in my life. Like I have a lot to share with you guys, so it's coming, I promise. There are plenty of times you film without your makeup on. Um, you have beautiful skin. What is your skin routine and vitamins? Okay, we'll get into that. Like I said, I have a vitamin video that I have coming up. So we'll get into that. But thank you so much um, for that question. Okay, so this person said, I would appreciate if you can comment on how you leveled up from a toxic relationship how to level up from a toxic relationship number one you have to recognize and accept that you are in a toxic situation and then you have to make a decision you have to make a decision do you want to stay and continue to cover it up and continue to suffer or do you want to leave now if you're truly in a toxic relationship especially if it's with a narcissist know that when you decide to leave, that's the most dangerous part. Sometimes the most deadly part of that relationship. That is the part of the relationship where you need a lot of help, you need a lot of support, and you need a lot, a lot of therapy, okay? So recognize that you're in a toxic situation. Make a decision of whether you wanna stay or whether you wanna leave. And I would suggest leave. Leaving was the best thing I did, but when I left was the worst part of the whole relationship did it blow up yes it did do i still have a, a smear campaign till this day yes i do but i am in an amazing space i have my freedom i have my power i can be who i am and as you guys have seen right before your eyes i am doing even better than i did before i even got into the relationship i'm doing better it took a lot of prayers it took a lot of you know strength to get out it still takes a lot of strength because i still have someone who's still like holding on to me and just not wanting to let things go but i don't face myself with that anymore i have my power now where i don't have the distraction i don't have someone physically pulling me down i don't have someone um they're trying to do it via the internet and the court system but none of that is working anymore so the best way to level up in my opinion is to recognize the situation you're in and decide to leave and leave for good number two focus on yourself because whatever you went into that relationship with that is who you are. That is what attracted that person in the first place. That is who you are. The power, the light, the beauty, the shine that comes with you. That is who you were. Now, that person may have done everything in their power to dim your light, to 
peek at your self-esteem to bring you down emotionally, financially, mentally. But remember, these kind of people don't go after weak people. They don't go after people who are not successful, not people who are not beautiful, people who are not smart and intelligent. They want the best of the best. So they go after the best of the best and then they try to tear you down. So just remember in the back of your mind who you are and who you were to begin with. Get out and go back to being that person. That is your best revenge that is the best thing you can do for yourself and I'm telling you your whole life will change especially if you're dealing with a person who has mental issue or narcissistic uh, behaviors it's gonna hurt not the relationship like the relationship you're out and you're happy it's gonna hurt when you have a good for nothing person who's a nobody trying to lash on to your coattail and refuses to let go that part is going to hurt at first but once you get over it once you see what's happening once the math starts to math in your head and you see the person for who they are it becomes pathetic at that point like you just look at it and laugh and you're gonna if you put yourself first and put your mental health your financial health your physical health you put yourself first you're gonna level up to a level where even they are gonna come back, which again, is what happened. Like, as the person is trying to tear me down publicly, they're begging privately. Like, I have all the receipt here. But again, it's not my personality to sit here and give clout to whom clout is not deserved. So we, we move, we continue to move on. So that's how you level up, y'all. Put you first, focus on you, the level up comes naturally. So this person wants to know, how to acquire a property when starting from scratch again i've already touched on this but i can do a full video on this and there are a lot of research resources on the internet like youtube and stuff um first time home buyers how to acquire a property and things of that nature but if i could just touch on this really quick number one you have to know what your credit score is. You have to have a great credit score, a decent credit score, depending on what state you're in, anywhere from 580 and up. That's a decent credit score. Number two, you have to have a steady income, whether you work for yourself or you have a job. Um, if you have a job, it has to be at least two years of I think two years or six months, don't quote me, but it has to be, I think two years of consistent income, right? And then the third thing is you have to have money saved up. You have to have money saved up for your down payment. You have to have money saved up for if you move into the house, you know, your closing costs, your furniture and things of that nature. So I would say credit score, income, save up money, okay? Can you tell us your thoughts about hard time escaping after a breakup and having a child okay again this is the same question you just have to know who you are believe in your goals and dreams and believe that you can still achieve them a relationship does not you know it doesn't ruin your life and it doesn't determine who you are there is still life after a broken relationship sometimes you give people people who don't even deserve your energy you give them a chance and they prove who they are and you just got to move on you just got to move on with your life and build yourself up put yourself first especially my female audience put yourself first do not go out looking for a rich man do not go out looking for somebody to save you do not go out depending on somebody else's you know work and 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 hard work and their achievements and stuff like that put yourself first by getting yourself an education or acquiring a skill that's going to make you money also make yourself a valuable person a valuable person to society you're never going to run dry on men i'm telling you a lot of times our scarcity mindset especially again when it comes to black people and africans they want to tell you go to school but then they tell you don't be too successful because you'll never find a man i'm telling you today that that is a lie that is a lie that is one of the biggest lies that has ever been told that if you are a successful woman you're gonna have a hard time finding a man that is a lie my dms are never dry if you're a valuable woman you take care of yourself you're attractive you have value maybe you're educated or you have a, a skill that pays because at the end of the day everything is about money right you have a skill that pays you good money you can take care of yourself you can take care of your family you're valuable you you you're outgoing you're articulate you are like you put you first 
you're gonna attract a lot of people. You're gonna attract good men and you're gonna attract dusties. You're probably gonna attract more dusties because these dusty men, they wanna be taken care of. They're looking for a come up. So you have to unfortunately go through what I went through to learn or maybe you have friends and family who have already been through something like this who can teach you or you just have great discernment where um, you, <laughs> you already know what's up so you know not to even threat those um, lines like you know not to go there but at the end of the day if you're a valuable person to society which means you have your stuff together you have your job you have your money coming in you have your education you have your skills you are a lash tech or you you have your cleaning company you are into real estate you're a nurse you're a doctor whatever you are you are going to attract men men are going to come your way it's just up to you to decide who you want to be with it's up to you to be smart and choose the kind of men you want to be with but you're not going to run dry on men like your dms will stay full even if you walk down the street if you carry yourself well your hair is done well your makeup is done and you are just a decent person there are seven over seven billion people in this world there's not a shortage of anybody not women not men okay so that's my easiest way to answer your question what is your plan for next year which is this year now i have a vision board and i usually do this and literally every time i write something on my vision board it comes true it comes to pass it comes to pass so i heavily believe in writing down your goals whether it's through a vision board or just listing it on your phone writing it down somewhere where you can remind yourself throughout the year if you focus on something if you're fixated on something there's a great great chance that is going to come to pass so my goals for this year is i have a lot on my vision board and i'm praying fingers crossed because what i do is i don't share my goals until they happen and i will share it everywhere if my goal is to hit 10 million subscribers i will not tell you that i'm just going to work on it i'm going to work 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 and then when i do hit 10 million subscribers i'm going to post it everywhere to the point where all the haters are going to get tired of me posting it but yeah that's just what i do i don't tell things until they're done and when they're done I share it but I tell it to myself and I write it down and I tell it to God and I pray about it and I work on it and I get fixated on it literally obsessed with it until it happens all right we'll do one more question and we're done oh the last question are you married no I'm not married but I'm happily dating I'm not going through a divorce there is nothing no reason as a young successful woman that I should be sitting here dwelling on. I move on. If I try something, it doesn't work. It wasn't meant to be. I pack up and I leave it and I try something else. If I try any career, any business idea, any relationship, if I try it, it doesn't work. I pray to God. I learn the lessons that were meant to be learned. I move on with my life. All right, family, those were the questions. A lot of the questions were repeated, so I didn't want to answer them over and over and over. But I plan to have a lot more content for you guys this year. Like I said, I am so happy to be here with you guys this new year. I hope that all of your dreams and goals come true. And I pray that for you, your family, and I pray that for myself as well. We're going to have a lot of content on this channel this year. We're going to do the hair content, the home decor content, the vitamins, the feminine hygiene, the natural hair, the beauty contents. We're going to have all of that. So please follow me on TikTok. I'm going to try to grow my TikTok this year. Follow me on Instagram. Follow me on, on Facebook if you don't already. Follow me on all of my platforms because one thing I do do is even if I'm not posting on YouTube, I'm posting on one of my other social media platforms. That way you'll keep up with me and you'll see what I'm doing on a daily basis. All right, family? Please share the video if you care. Share it with someone who anything that I said in this video might help. Also, comment your favorite part below and if you haven't already subscribed to the channel, please go ahead and hit that subscribe button so you can join the family. Thank you all again so, so much for your love and support. I love you all and I'll see you all in my next one. Bye!